record on the computer. And one of the things that we always try to do is we remind ourselves that the presence of God is with us in this space and in this time. And so we light a candle. If you have a light or something nearby or just want to take a moment, um, often we can forget that um, digital space is still sacred space and holy space. And the fact that we've taken time today to come together um, to talk about some really great ministries and opportunities um, reminds us that we do it because of the light and the light that is within us and around us, especially in this time of epiphany. Um, so it's not just a normal meeting. It's, it's a sacred meeting that we are encountering um, as we go forward. So I'm excited about today's meeting. I do want to share with you that um, this was probably, I usually do pre-meetings with those who are coming to talk just to kind of give them the quick um, down low on how super organized these meetings are, um, right everyone? But this pre-meeting was the one that I got the most out of because already I'm like now emailing Allison, well, what about this and how do I do this? And um, so this is the one that I'm, I'm already jumping on to use and learned a lot when I gathered with Allison and Chuck last week. Um, some of you already know Allison and Chuck. Um, I think Laura, Laura has met Chuck before. They seem to have, you know, a child, you know, hang out in the same house. Um, some of I see some quality Texans that are definitely here supporting one another. And then of course, in the disciples world, there's always overlap. So even though Sarah's in North Carolina, we all know at one point Allison was in North Carolina <laughs> at the same church. Um, so I am excited that I missed that office view. Uh, <laughs> um, I know it's like, wow, such quality people going through that church. Two points for all those search committees. Um, so as we gather um, for those who are newer to this meeting or for those who it's been a while since you've been with us, um, these are recorded. So if you want to also go back and look at previous meetings, they're all just an hour. Um, and we try to do a lot in that hour. Um, that way you haven't just come for another meeting because we all you know, need another Zoom meeting like we need a hole in the head. Um, but that there's a lot of information and resources to be gathered. So the first part of this meeting will be with Allison and Chuck sharing with us about their ministry um, and the opportunities that it offers um, throughout the country um, and some of the gifts it brings. And then we will actually move from some of their knowledge as well into just the resources and some updates that I wanna make sure that you're aware of or that are on your radar as we go forward. Um, and then we will continue to have conversation and cover what may not have been covered. Um, but that way, those of you who may have to go ahead and go, can go ahead and go and make sure that you've gotten all the pieces. Um, Allison and Chuck, there are a lot of things that they do in ministry in a variety of ways. They serve churches, they serve mission trips, they serve different boards, they're keynoters for things, they're, they're there. They're good people to know with good hearts. Um, and that is my amazing introduction for both of them. But the primary reason I invited them for today um, is to talk about Connect Ministries um, because it's a really awesome opportunity. So, Allison or Chuck, I think Allison's going first, Chuck's filling in, and then Allison's coming back. So Allison, um, what would you like to share? Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be with you all today. Um, most of you I know, and it's so great to see your faces and to meet some new people. Um, what I thought we'd do is talk a little bit about what Connect Ministries is, um, mission trips there, but also just in general, mission trip planning and opportunities for this summer among other organizations as well. Um, so I'll kind of start with ours, but then ask questions about anything you have and jump in anytime with questions. Um, who here is familiar with Connect Ministries? Some of you, yeah. Some of you a lot, some of you a little. Um, we are a service learning mission trip organization. Um, our goal is to empower groups, and those groups can be anything we do youth groups, we do college groups, we do intergenerational groups. Those are some of my favorite. We've had groups with kids as young as four and five, all the way up to people as old as 80, 85 come together. Um, we also do weekend retreats for elementary age kids and their um, grownups. 
which is a really fun one. So we empower groups to put their faith into action through service and justice in ways that are relational, sustainable, and dignity giving. Um, so our main goal is to teach and empower groups when you come. How do you do this work we're called to in ways that matter in our long term? Um, and that really make a difference in our communities. I was a youth minister and still am a youth minister um, for a long time and spent a lot of time, as I'm sure many of you all have, either planning mission trips to places on my own, but there were places I wasn't super familiar with and I had to build those connections and start fresh, or taking them to pre-planned programs, which didn't quite fit our theology, didn't do things in ways that I thought were really relational and good. And so I'd have to be up at late at night translating to our kids what was happening and I'm not a night person so I wasn't really interested in that <laughs> taking that extra time um so I always thought hey, we need a way to teach and empower kids and anyone to do this service work day to day in ways that matter and also to have youth groups be able to go on pre-planned mission trips that fit disciples theology that you know when you show up it's good work and you don't have to make all the connections do all the things um, so how ours works is you pick a theme, um, and I'll show you our website in a little bit on the more details, but you pick a theme. This year, our themes are refugee and immigrant welcome, anti-racism, immigration, um, yeah, this is refugee, but we have one specifically focused on immigration as well, um, the effects of poverty on children in urban areas, hunger relief, and then homelessness and housing justice. So. You pick a theme that you're like, this is a thing our church is really cares about. Our church is passionate about. We do this work in our community. I want to learn more about this, and I want our kids to learn more. Um, and then you show up at one of our sites. We have sites in Nashville and Tucson and Fort Worth. Um, and we put you in touch with our partners who we're already working with year-round. So we set you up with service projects each day, um, two or three projects a day, of people that we work with year round. So you know these are good quality people. We have long-term connections. You're not having some of the problems of those like short-term mission trip stuff. Um, and we also do different types of work each day. When I actually, when I served at Hillier, um, they do amazing mission trips, um, but many of their mission trips are to Appalachian Service Project, which is phenomenal. But I'd been there a couple of years and I had one really active youth who said, oh, I don't go on mission trips because I can't serve. And I was like, um, that's not a thing. I'm going to need more information. To which she said, oh, I'm really bad with a hammer. So I just, and I said, oh, oh, there's so many ways you can serve that aren't building a, a deck, right? Or a ramp. Like we got lots of things you can sign up and do. So when you come to our projects, you'll, kids will get to do, or your group will get to do projects in all different areas. Some that are hands-on, some that are relational, some that are behind the scenes, so that each person can find the thing that they go, yep, this is me. Um, I like to serve in this way, and I can do this. We also teach them how do you do it relationally, sustainably, and dignity giving, and how do you do it justice-based and service-based? How do you connect with your neighbors? Um, and then we tell the group, you'll do really important, amazing work while you're here, but that's not really why you're here. We want you to be here to go home and do really important, amazing work in your own community when you go home. And so the group will spend time as individuals and then also as a group planning how they'll make these same connections when they go home. And then we'll have you send us the project you did, um, what you're doing in your community later on in the year so we can share and see. Um, so that's like a very quick overview of what we do. Um, Chuck has brought lots of groups on trips with us. Chuck, what do you want to add? Um, I mean, you've said a lot. Uh, the things that I would highlight, um, the ease of trips to, to connect. Um, I've been on a lot of mission trips. I've planned a lot of them. You click the link to fill out the paperwork. Allison knows you're coming, and that's pretty much it after you arrange transportation. You know that you're going to get a <laughs> good, solid mission trip with a comfortable place to stay. And um, the quality of the stuff that you do. You mentioned swinging a hammer. Uh, I've been on mission trips where they literally tried to work you to death or they had you in dangerous situations. You're on like a steep pitched roof in the middle of the city, three stories up, covered in <laughs> roofing tiles and like, you know, you could die at any second. And you get back to your bed at night. You're like, I don't think I can do this again for the rest of the week. But 
there is the physical element to the connect mission trips, but there's also the educational and the relational elements. You spend a lot of time getting to know about who you're going to be working with, learning about the situations that they're in, where they come from, uh, the processes that they'll be going through. Um, and most importantly, it's just really uh, relational oriented. I work with a lot of kids who are extroverted and I work with a lot of kids who are very introverted and are on the spectrum and have social anxiety and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> most notably this last summer, <clears throat> I have a, a youth in my one of my two groups who I could count maybe a hundred words that she'd said in mission trips and youth group and all that. But this last summer she opened up uh, on that mission trip with Allison and was having a great time and was social and that's continued. She's developed those relationships with the youth that went on the trip and uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, when I go to Connect, I know that I'm getting a, a good experience for myself, but also for all the, the youth that I bring with me. It's just fantastic. I asked a question over in the oh, chat I box, but it's a question that I assume probably at this point, the answer would be no. But it would be an interesting um, relation building. Like I, I'm sitting here wondering if we should help reach out to the regional ministers and have them do a Connect Ministry trip together. Yes. Um, one, especially because I know many of our pastors and clergies, and um, but a lot of our lay ministers, who are a lot of times our youth ministers or our students, also are like you said the educational component to, to find a way to get especially with them learning information to get those things named and recognized by the regions um, as continued education for them. Yes, I'm, let's do it. Talk to your I, regional ministers. I'm well, not we all know. This, but the, the materials that Allison provides um, and the education, I suspect at least some of it would probably count because you can provide proof of the training that you've been through. And I suspect Allison would be willing to send all that stuff too. Well, and Laura, Laura wrote that my favorite thing about Connect is that they don't underestimate our kids. Um, we well, the, oh, good. No, go ahead. We use the, so we interact with groups differently, that clearly depending on their age, you know, how you teach stuff and do stuff depend on the age groups of who's there. But we use the same curriculum on every group. So if you come as a group of adults, which we've had all adult groups come, or if you come as a group of elementary schoolers with their parents, you're getting the same curriculum because it, how we learn about these things matters. Now, the language we use, the background we assume, yeah, that's a little different depending on your age. Um, but we expect that every single person who shows up on a trip can do service and justice, put their faith into action in their community in powerful ways and can change it. And we expect the same from a five-year-old and an 80-year-old um, and whoever comes. And, the, and, and it also shows. We do one activity um, where we learn about, I won't give it away in case you come on a trip, but we learn about how you, um, how we share resources in our community um, and as a country and as a community. And we had a group, intergenerational group come um, that it took them two hours to do this activity. At one point, the adults had started holding like UN summits. They tried, they were like protesting, they were the whole thing. I had a group of kindergarten and first graders and their grownups come. They figured it out in three minutes. So, you know, we learn differently, but we all have gifts and things we kind of bring to that. Uh, other piece I forgot to share is we also do a lot of relational. So you'll get to meet from experts in whatever subject you're in, um, with the primary expert being people who've experienced it. So on the Monday night of your trip, if you do a week long, um, we'll do a community dinner where you'll get to eat with someone who is a refugee, is an immigrant, has experienced hunger, has experienced homelessness, who will share their story and sit down and really do a conversation um, with you. And then we'll continue that throughout the week. Um, but we have that one really primary one there at the beginning. Does anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts? From a regional staff person. Yes. Um, I was just going to say for reconciliation ministries, our only requirement to get the uh, reconciliation is that it's endorsed by the reconciliation of the general church. Oh, uh, good to and know. So, I'll reach out. Thank you. That's all you need, Allison. <laughs> You're the best. I was going to share our website with you all. Can you see my screen? Awesome. Um, if you want to learn more or do more, you can go here. It's connectministrytrips.org. Um, 
the first thing you would do is fill out an interest form, which is here under interest form. Um, and you can see here the dates um, that we have open. I forgot to send our Nashville site. Um, it's, folk, it's led by Reverend Hope Hodnett, who's phenomenal. Um, she works at Safe Haven Family Shelter in Nashville. That trip would be focused on homelessness and housing justice. And your group would also be matched with people around the same age of your group or intergenerational, if you have an intergenerational group, who are currently or have recently experienced homelessness so that you can all together talk about what housing justice looks like. Um, we want our world to be a place where everyone thrives. And um, we teach ministry. We don't do ministry for people. We do ministry with people. And the best way to do that is if we look at each other together and say, how do we make our community look more like the world God dreams of, where everyone has a safe place to live and food to eat? And so you'll do that alongside people who are, um, are or recently have experienced homelessness in all the same programs. I um, mean, then our Tucson site is led by the amazing Reverend Kelly Dick, um, who's phenomenal at a Saguaro Christian Church. And you'll be doing um, immigration work there, learning about immigration. Um, you'll have the option to stay in the United States or um, if your group wants to or has passports to do um, cross the border and do work with their partners on the other side of the border there as well. Um, so yeah, those are our three sites. So you pick here, it'll show your dates that are available. Pick your interest forms, um, pick what theme you are interested in. Um, anticipated number of participants. We welcome up to 40 people on one trip. However, our sweet spot's 15 to 20 because you can really do relational work in that size. Um, you can also, we don't overwhelm nonprofits. You can be actually be more helpful with those smaller groups than bringing in like 100 kids to one organization. Um, so yeah, you'll fill that out and then I'll get back to you with all the details. And that's about it. Um, our trips are affordable on purpose. We, they cost $200 for um, a week. That's it. Um, for the whole week for your kids. We are working on getting churches and grants and those things to underwrite that cost because we don't want um, this opportunity to be something that just those who are wealthy or churches who have resources can afford to come on. We want everyone to know, no matter their income level or background, um, that they can make a difference in their community. So that's why we keep it at that affordable cost. I would just add that <clears throat> for what you're paying, you're getting three times the trip. It's absolutely worth the cost. Um, and you get, yeah, we'll do breakfast and lunch for you, a place to stay, all the programming. All you're providing is the transportation um, and your kids. And then um, you will do your own dinner. We um, will have kitchens on site at all the places with all the stuff you need um, to do that. But yeah. Um, Sarah has a question. How many groups go on a trip? Um, like at the same time? Is that what you're asking, yes, Sarah? Yes, I think so. Um, usually just one. Um, if you have, you know, if you have a group of three or four people, like we've had several groups that have pretty small groups that will put two together if both groups are interested in that. Or we've also had um, groups come at the same time on purpose. So like they, they live in the same community. They want to do work together when they get back. And so they come together. Um, if that happens, we'll put you in kind of small group work with your church so that you can build those communities together and then go back out. But you, most of the time, because we try to stay small um, so we can be more relational, we keep it at just one group at a time, uh, which does make it harder to grow. That's how most pre-planned mission trip programs like ours grow is they put in 10, 15 groups at the same time. But um, that kind of goes against our relational mission. So that's why we haven't done that. So Allison, what is, um, I have several questions that I'm interested in, but I also want to be respectful of those who I know have to leave in a second to make sure they've got as much information. Um, so I'm going to ask you these questions and I want you to hold on to them. Yeah. I want to hear a little bit more about how this um, came to be and what yeah. kind of your future dreams are for it as you in your own story to share a little bit about your story with this program, as well yeah. as a little more information about the curricula yes. um, and just how that came together. So those are things that I'm interested just to hear. <laughs> um, but like I said, we're gonna take a pause just, and, and then Allison will also be able to kind of build upon some of these pieces of information I'm about to share with you as well. Um, so I'm going to take back over for just a second, and then we will come back for those who can continue to stay. 
Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you, which is always scary because you never know what I'm going to share. Um, oh, look, it's Connect Ministries. That was easy. Woohoo! Um, one of the things I want to share with you, though, is I'm going to head to our website for a second um, just to kind of show you some things um, that are updated. I want to let you know that we have some new books. We've been going through our children's books, um, but in that time, we've also been updating some of the COVID resources um, that are out there um, that are really once upon a time, not so long ago is one I actually got for Christmas um, to kind of help kids, especially as this pandemic is going to continue to have ways to talk. Um, there's also more books um, that are just listed here if you kind of want to do your own search um, as we continue to find quality ways to talk about um, the pandemic as well. Um, you'll be able to see this meeting and you can see the previous meetings if you just click on this link as well. Um, next month's meeting will be with Brian Frederick Gray and he's going to invite some of the previous peace interns. If you do know somebody who would be a good peace intern, um, registration applications for that are due January 31st. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, if you're looking or getting ready for Lent resources, um, there are things that we will be putting out, but of course, we're not quite that organized yet. Um, but there are definitely things here to keep um, on your list under worship resources as well, or things to look into and update um, as you put together what is Lent, what is Ash Wednesday, how do we describe these, um, and to connect virtual messages for that. Um, I do want to also remind everyone um, it, to sign up for the um, text messaging. And we did send out the link earlier today for everyone um, with the connection. We'll also send out just a reminder about the children's books and little things. I promise I won't send you a bunch of crazy stuff, just little pieces. I do also want to share with you um, that today I put up um, Allison's blog about Connect Ministry. So as you're talking to different people, um, you're able to share kind of a little bit of her experience as another opportunity to share as well. Um, this what, was Chuck's group last year. Yes. So yay, Chuck, your group looks good. She shared the picture. Um, I also, if you're starting to plan for summer, now that we're past that side, um, Connect Ministries is one of several options. I want to make sure you're just aware of what else we have that is kind of out there. Um, Disciple volunteering will actually also connect you to several different options as well. So some of these do overlap um, when you're interested about servant, servant ministry. So you can see some of these things are already overlapping. Um, Week of Compassion volunteering, those of you who were with us last month with um, Caroline learned a little bit about those opportunities, which also overlaps with disciple volunteering. But if you click on this link, it will take you over to this page where you can also, th these are quality hammer options usually um, for the kids who still like the hammer. Um, but they also have other ways of interacting as well. And then um, you can see the other missions that we have connected. A lot of our camps actually do different types of work camps. Christ Mount is one of those. Um, Disciple Summer Mission, many of you know about that too. That's another grassroots Texas movement. Um, and they have their registration that is open here as well. Um, Blue Theology, if you have people um, interested in ocean care and creation care in that way, it is out in California. But they've also last summer had several virtual options um, that were quite in interesting. You see Urban Spirit, Urban Mission, um, DOOR is pretty popular with us in the UCC, Youth Mission Company, Passport, Good Samaritan. These are all things that you can look into. Um, but over here, just so you're um, aware, we continue to have ways to do mission work and awareness um, without going out. We have the READY curriculum from Global Ministries. Um, there's still some older kids to kids things. Um, some of the happy doll stuff is fun. Project Disaster. 30-hour um, famine, all of these are really kind of just different ways to prepare um, at home. A lot of you have done those kind of things as well, but there are new ones that are coming up um, as 
as well. Um, I do also want to share, um, we have like mission trip covenants that you can use the template of these types of things. If you need travel safety needs, off campus, on campus behaviors, guidelines, um, things just to kind of talk through um, the best ways to have forms and waivers. Um, and we have lots of different templates for those and for background checks and for different things that you may need as you prepare and gather to do whatever travel or programming you're looking at. Always remember the insurance board has a lot that is there for you as well. Um, the other thing, just to make sure that we have lifted up is some of the upcoming children worship and wonder um, trainings that are happening. So let me make sure I can, I'm like, I've opened up so much. Um, leaders. Um, you can see we have both trainings and workshops. Trainings um, are listed on this side um, and workshops are listed on this side. A workshop is basically a reminder or an introduction, or if it's been a while since you remember um, how to really correctly do orientation, um, these are ways for people to kind of update and remind themselves what they need to do. Um, and these are more of the trainings and a lot of them are virtual. So it's a great, most of them are virtual. So it's a great time to connect in no matter what the size of your church is at this time. Um, the, how to sign up for the text messaging. If you go to our Facebook page, it's actually towards the top and I will write that in there specifically in just a second um, because we all know I can't remember things right on top of my head. Um, but that's a lot of information. Um, I know that Randy also continues to meet with the camp people and his things are constantly updated on the outdoor ministry site for those meetings and those gatherings and that kind of overlap as well. Um, but if there are other things and resources that you need or it's something you're looking for, just remember we're here to help you go down whatever rabbit holes um, are there for you to find. But it is that type of time of year for mission trips and safety policies and rebooting and, and Lent is now coming. So those are some of the things um, that are ready for you. Or if you need some new children's books in your library, um, those are a lot of fun or if you're continuing to communicate. So I just wanna make sure that those things are on your radar. We'll be sending out a newsletter soon and that'll repeat a lot of those kind of things. But just, and, and please share with, you know, those that you know um, that are out there who may need different things. We're also continuing to be connected to the Children's Disaster Service. They have reached out to Colorado Fires already. So there's work and connection that's happening, which is really awesome. Any questions? Anything at this time, like with COVID protocols, or the ongoing with Omicron or things that um, are that, you know, we have the books, we have the different discussions, we've had the ongoing things, but any, and not that I have the answer to any of these things, but I'm definitely in the trenches um, with my own children as they're like the only ones double masking at school. Um, if there's anything at this time. COVID-wise, just so y'all know, if you come on a Connect trip, we do take COVID very seriously on our trips, um, in part because we want to protect anyone who comes, but also the people you'll work with are vulnerable populations. So if they get sick, um, they miss work, and that means they lose their job, um, or it means they don't have health care if they end up in the hospital, and it costs more money than they have. And so um, we we are really strict with our policies. We have everyone who, before they come, be vaccinated and get a negative test if um, well, at least get a negative test, and we, re we recommend vaccinated as well. If there's any symptoms while you're there, the whole group will get tested, which poor Chuck's group had to do this past year. Um, we hated for that, but we're glad we could keep everyone safe. Um, and then you'll be masked at all times, except when it's just your group, just to make sure we can keep everyone safe. Now, hopefully COVID is better by the summer. I said that every summer the last two summers, but maybe this will be the one uh, and we can go, you know, slight down on those policies, but we do want to start with the strictest to kind of make sure everyone can stay, can stay safe. And we also offer virtual if that works out better for your group. 
Um, do you all have things to add to the list of mission trips and groups or experiences? I know a lot of Kentucky people do hands-on mission trips. Those are always a good one. And we do, being in Kentucky and near there, we have the Appalachia trips. And then Hiram, of course, has its farm up here in Ohio. Um, so there are often a lot of different opportunities um, that people know about, but we just don't share as much. So what are some of your insights or knowledge or experiences that have also worked? This summer, uh, <clears throat> my two groups and Laura's upcoming group, we're gonna go to the Tennyson Center in Denver. Mm -hmm. If you've ever made that trip, you know how great it is. It's very powerful uh, and it's hard, but it's it's worth it. Uh, if you haven't- I've done that one. Out, it's a fantastic trip. And it's also beautiful. Like it's one of those shows, like it's great to go. Tennyson is such a great thing, but then like I, we took our kids to Red Rocks to watch just a concert and enjoy that. Even if you don't get tickets, the way Red Rocks is, you can hear the music from anywhere nearby. So definitely check it out. We also partner with Reach Beyond Mission. I don't know if any of y'all have done trips with them. They're fantastic. They have sites in Austin, DC, Albuquerque, and Tulsa. Um, this is hot off the press, so y'all can be one of the first to know that we are working on in conversations and partnership and conversations with them on partnering to become one organization. Um, hopefully by this time next year, which should be pretty cool, where you can go on a connect trip with us and learn about. Um, you know, refugees and meet refugees in your community, spend all year working with refugees, and the next year go on a REACH trip um, and then go to DC and advocate for refugees. Um, so you can kind of get a whole system, but they have, we currently are still registering and things separately, and they have some amazing trips and programs. Well, one of the things I like to do is encourage families to go, especially with the MBA, like the Tennis Center. Families are going to go out to Colorado all the time, right? That's where they're going to go. Um, and they can call ahead and maybe learn something about those experiences. So one of the things beyond just the idea of mission trips is um, looking, you know, reaching out to NBA and saying, oh, my family is going on this family trip here and spending a morning or an afternoon um, learning about that. Like Blue Theology, if you go out to California and you're wanting to see LA and Hollywood and, or Disneyland, Blue Theology is right there. Um, and so you can connect with them. So there are some really cool ministries and mission to make part of a family trip and experience um, just to learn more about who we are. You can do that both in a mission based way and in an um, education, educational way. Anybody else, which which things would you say stay away from? Nobody wants to say, everybody. I mean, I struggle with the theology of a lot of the group um, publishing company trips that they put together. That, that's, um, it's one of those things where it looks easy up front, but then you're doing a lot of work to um, stay up late at night with Allison when you'd rather be sleeping, trying to um, make sure the theology kind of works in a way that's creating dignity as well. Because um, obviously conversations around mission and ministry can be very, very different and some empowers and some does not, as we all know. Anything else? Then if there's not, then Allison, yeah. are you willing to share a little bit more about the curricula and your journey and some of the things that are happening? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our curriculum, each morning you'll learn about whatever the topic is that your group has chosen. So hunger or homelessness or um, refugees, what any of those are. So you'll get to learn um, more about that topic in the morning, which is great. And you'll learn, we watch through videos, interactive, those kinds of things. But then we have a connect time each afternoon. Um, and that'll be the same no matter which trip theme you go on. So our first one is connecting to the mission. So your group will learn what does service mean? What does justice mean? What does it look like to do it relationally, sustainably, dignity giving? I mean, all of this is very activity based and interactive. Um, the next day you'll learn connecting to God. So they'll learn more about how does, what does this mean putting my faith into action and how is this my faith and where's God calling in that? Um, you'll learn connecting to yourself. We use the, um, 
the quote that God calls you to the place where your greatest gladness and the world's deep needs meet. And we hope the kids really brainstorm what is their great gladness and what are the needs of the world that keep them up at night and where might those meet for them, um, at least in this moment. Connecting to each other, that'll be a great time for your group to connect. That's when we do sort of the typical camp, um, you know, pass around the paper and write affirmations of where we see God in each other when you've had a hard day to look at again, um, those types of pieces. Um, we also at that day look a little bit more about how do we connect with people different than ourselves as well, who we interact with. Um, and then the last day is connecting back home. Um, and so that's that planning your projects for when you go home and your community and your relationship stuff. So that's sort of the basis of our curriculum and what it looks like. Um, what was, oh, how it came to be. Is that your next question? How did it come to be and where are you going? Because you're definitely in the middle of a major shift. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we are. Um, so it came to me, it's something I felt called to since I was a kid in youth ministry, I, or a kid as a youth. Um, I grew up in a disciples church, actually the same one I serve now, Ridgely Christian Church. Um, and I grew up in a more privileged white neighborhood. I mean, it has country club in the name of the title of the neighborhood. Um, and so I did not experience a lot of poverty as an elementary schooler. I went to middle school at a... Um, very mixed income magnet school on the other side of town in a primarily African-American um, part of Fort Worth where I'd never been before. For some reason, I guess my parents just put me on a bus the first day and that, I'm sure I must have seen it beforehand. But anyway, that's my first memory of seeing it. Um, so I rode the bus there and thought, I've never seen this before. And I knew that my church liked to help people. And so I called my youth minister up that night. Many of you know, he's Chris Wilson now. I mean, he's Chris Wilson then too. Um, but Chris Wilson, who was a bright divinity school student at the time, was my youth minister. And I said, Chris, I've discovered poverty. I think our church must not know because when people are hurting, we help. And so I just think they don't know. And so can I'm telling you so we can go out and help. But he was like, oh no, we know. And I was like, well, then I don't understand what on earth the problem is. Like, wh what are we doing? Why aren't we doing things? And so... He, very wise, um, took our very small little youth group, there were about five of us, the next Sunday in um, his car with our other sponsor and drove us around that part of town and said, your job is not, our job as a church is not to do ministry to or for these people. God is already here. We don't need to bring God here. God's strength is already here. He showed us the places in that community that were thriving, the incredible leaders and preachers and teachers in that part of the community that were doing amazing things and said, our job is to partner with them, to work together with each other so that our whole community can look more like the world God dreams of. And so in that moment, I thought, that that's what I want to do. I want to do that, and I want to teach people how to do that. And that's what I've tried to do throughout my ministry, and that's what our program tries to do, um, is to empower that, that. How do we not do ministry to or for, but do ministry with as whole communities so our whole communities can thrive? Um, so that's kind of the brief background. Where we're going, um, Ridgely is brilliant, I think. I'm very grateful for them. And in addition to helping me first find this call, they've now agreed to help launch it. So they've hosted sites here since we first began. And now for the next um, three years, they are um, supporting a lot of my salary, if not all of it, for, for a couple of years, um, to do this full time. So we, as we start to think about how we unite to with um, possibly unite with Reach Beyond Ministry and begin those conversations, how we continue to grow, how we make this a disciples organization in a different way rather than not just, but growing from being just a ministry of one congregation to a larger piece. Um, and they're still supporting us with space and with office space and with money and those kinds of things. We are looking for additional support in order to keep helping that to happen. Um, so that we can keep trip costs low, so that everyone can come, have churches, grants, those kinds of things help underwrite that. Um, so over the next year, I would love to come speak at your church um, with your people to either um, talk about how we can support, you know, how you can support us, how you can be a part of funding this. Maybe you want to fund our ministry interns or college and seminarians who help lead, or maybe you want to help underwrite the trip um, for costs for kids who can't necessarily afford it, um, whatever that might look like for you. We've also started doing some consulting with church staffs and outreach teams about how to make the 
outreach ministry you're already doing, more relational, sustainable, and dignity giving. Um, so we've done that now with a couple churches, and I find it really rewarding because it's what I love to talk about. Um, so if you have an outreach team, lay leaders, folks, you know, we're like, we're doing this and we want to do it more, more transformative, different, better, or we're not doing this yet and we really want to, I'd love to come have those conversations with you. Yeah. Does that answer it, Olivia, what you're looking for? I'm excited with you. How can we not, you know, the, there's so many amazing creative ways to um, stay connected, um, to empower people. And I think I speak for everyone here that um, is grateful for your passion and where um, God's, God is using your gifts as well. Um, and I know many of us will continue to try to stay connected um, to do this work together. So if anything, you're not alone um, in all of this. Sometimes I know um, it feels like you might be. Um, you know, now you know Sarah. So if you ever need to become international, you know. I'm ready. She's, she's ready to go. She's also in beautiful wine country. I'm just saying, you know, near Niagara <laughs> Falls, it's, it's a good place to be as well. Um, and there's so many, there's so much opportunity here um, for growth and, and things as we um, move forward. So I'm excited. I mean, I, I sent you my sign up. I plan to take my little church. Um, I've been looking for a quality intergenerational trip for my little church for quite some time and um, sent Allison the email. I was like, none of these dates are the real ones. These are just what I can, I just needed to get the email to you. Um, You're thrilled. Um, to kind of understand that we keep saying that, you know, we, we need those relationships with those adults. Um, and we need those interconnectedness to truly be the church. And the fact that um, you're creating that space and that can be flexible in multiple ways um, is what really in many ways is going to what keep God moving from we've seen the some, pews. Oh, I'm so sorry. oh, no, I was just babbling. You've met me. Go ahead. We've seen some of the most powerful come out of intergenerational trips because when you go back home and say, you know, they, you've come up with this great idea. And so when you've had on the trip, people who are five and people who are 14 and people who are 25 and people who are 50, who are all different kinds of leaders already in your congregation, all coming back to your community, excited about the same thing. Um, it makes it easier to keep that work going. Um, now, you know, if you do bring just, not just youth group, but if you bring just a youth group, that also has some extreme power. And we talk a lot with the kids about, okay, you have this great idea. Who are the stakeholders in your church? Who are the stakeholders in your community? How do you get this done? We go through all those logistics as well. But when the stakeholders are already in the room on the trip and having had had the same experience, it can be pretty powerful to do that way. So if intergenerational works for your group, those are my favorite. I like all of them, but I, I really see a lot of difference come out of that when you go back home. Well, and if there is a time when you want to expand to other places, I mean, Nashville's easy for us because we can drive. And yeah. when you come to intergenerational trips, it's, there's a limit of like what certain people can do and where they can go and where they're comfortable with. So as you open those doors, um, clearly we, we, we have many connections to continue to make sure that our all so many communities can use this kind of work and connect in. So um, keep us updated on where you want to go, how you want to get there. Um, I know you have hope and we will give a shout out. I'm sure Kelly Dick is not watching this, but she is 40 today. So we will give <laughs> yes. her the shout out for that um, as well on this day. Um, continue to be excited about all that you all do um, in all of your different regions and all of your different gifts. Um, we are here to be your cheerleaders. We are here to let people know that you're awesome. I will be obnoxiously loud for all the amazing work you do. Um, I also want to lift up just because I looked at Laura on my screen. Anybody want to be a keynoter for Just Say No Ministries or know somebody who might be good for that? That's also a good thing to know at this time. So there are just so many opportunities um, that a lot of times people just don't know about. Um, and, and we're creating even more opportunities um, and internships and things like that. So um, just stay connected with each other so that we can plug in, especially our young adults, um, to do what they've been called to do as well through their internships and different programs. So there's so much out there. Allison, go. 
speaking of internships, we also have those. And so if you have if you have young adults, college students, seminary students, people in that 20 to 30 range um, who are doing whatever, but this might be something they want to do in the summer, we would love to have, have them serve with us. Um, we've had some really amazing ministry interns, um, and I'm excited to see who else we can have. And that's another great way to empower young adults, too, to not only learn the service and justice information, but to be able to teach it to others. And what's the name of the website again for that? Um, connectministrytrips.org. I'll put it in the um, chat. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I have to say Olivia knows our daughter well, and she started going on mission trips when she was four years old. Oh, wow. So we, we started doing intergenerational, basically because we had nowhere else to leave her. So she yeah. us. our son was seven or eight at the time. So, and so they, and they learned a lot of skills on there too, because mm -hmm. we always said you had to have an adult with you if you were younger than middle school. Mm -hmm. We weren't, we weren't providing a babysitting service. Mm -hmm. Once they were middle school, they could come without a parent, but they needed a parent or adult with them if they were coming in younger. So mm -hmm. most of our older adults on the trip would take like these kids that were on there and said, no, you come over here and work with me. And I'm, I'm going to show you how to use this hammer. I'm gonna... mm -hmm. Our son was what, 12 or 13 and up on a roof fixing roofs. Mm -hmm. So with... that's awesome. Well, yeah. yeah, down in Hattiesburg. Oh, very cool. Yeah, we've done that for a lot of years. We did, we did the Memphis trip. Um, what's it called? Youth, Min uh, oh, Youth Ministry Co. Yes. They're also an amazing organization if you're looking for another one. They have one in Raleigh and Memphis and Asheville and are great. We did Memphis in 2019. We haven't really been able to do much since then yeah. with COVID, but um, we did that in 2019 and our youth really loved it. That They're fantastic. It was, it was so good, all the different aspects. It was a different thing every day mm -hmm. and they really liked it and um, they had good, you know, went back to your own group and had kind of a little breakout session to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and Allison, while I think about it, as you look for summer interns, um, you may want to reach out to higher education leadership ministries or okay. some of the chaplains. I know Eureka actually provides payment and scholarship for summer interns. So oh, it may wonderful. not come out of your pocket. It might come out of their the school's pocket to help provide internships for their students Even better so you may want to find bruce folks and see what he's got i know mm -hmm. for sure but they're um and but reach out to chris dorsey or reach out to nancy brink and the different yeah. um quality people that we have because you you may actually get people without it having to come from your pocket that's a great idea thanks it's not it's not my idea it's just a reality i'm aware of <laughs> Um, yes, so we, and we will continue this conversation. Um, any other things, because you know what, we, we're actually under our hour, you know, we make that <laughs> promise. We do some awesome, quick things. We cover a lot of bases. I try really hard to make it worth your time because I know I don't want another Zoom meeting either. <laughs> um, so anything else, Randy, any updates that we need to know from you as far as what's coming up? Well, let's see. Um, next Monday would be Outdoor Ministries Group, which is 1 to 1 o'clock uh, on Monday afternoon uh, for those that might be engaged with that group. Um, and um, we're going to uh, have Allison and I'm glad to have Chuck if he wants to join also sometime to, with a couple of other groups that I work with. We'll, I think, Laura, I think we ought to have them uh, have Diamond host a similar gathering to this, which will probably tap some other people that aren't on with this group right now. Uh, so we'll we'll be in touch with that. Um, and there's recently, uh, which Heather's been a little part of, uh, uh, I really recently started gathering some of the folks that do regional ministry uh, with young adults. And I think that would be another good group to kind of hear from, from you all. Uh, certainly, Allison, like I say, Chuck, if you'd like to join also. So we'll be in touch about about those opportunities in the near future. Thanks, Randy. And Chuck, I should also say, Chuck is a new um, adult member of General Youth Council, 
haven't had our first meeting for a Zoom meeting, of course, for, for 2022, but Chuck will be in touch soon and get that going, uh, get, get UIC cranked up for the new year. Thank you, sir. If I could plug the Aiders thing again, you mentioned keynoters for Aiders camp. My head says about to die. Uh, we really need more keynoters. Laura and I are a keynoting team. If you've ever thought about it, if you don't know what it, what it is and what it's about, you can ask us questions. We'd love to tell you all about it. But we really need more keynoting teams around the country because we're kind of at a shortage. And that's a very valuable ministry. Mm -hmm. So if you have and if any you need a quick in... meeting about it, November's meeting was with Mike. So if you need to go watch it and learn more, you can watch the first 20 minutes. Of course, Mike was a little long winded, so it might be 25, but it, it's definitely very informative um, yeah, for those fantastic. as well. He is. Can I also add a plug that um, here in the Southwest region in July, we are going to do a leadership seminar for all high school students. Um, and it used to be just here in the region that we did for our youth councils who plan camps, but we've decided to make it a true leadership seminar for all disciples and open it up and we have a keynote speaker of Dr. Terry Horde Owens this year coming to speak with our youth and so for the week so we'll start advertising that probably within the next couple of weeks but would love everybody to join us for that and it'll be in Gonzales, Texas which is right outside of San Antonio. That's awesome. Send me that info Heather and I'll make sure to add it to newsletters and things and get heads up and try to be loud for you. Absolutely. Thank you. One piece I didn't share, Olivia, that I had someone not on this call email me about just now, which I was looking at, is um, if our organization is open and affirming. Um, we do. We we absolutely are. We do not have the open and affirming logo yet because when we hopefully merge with Reach, they already do, and then we don't have to recreate the wheel. But we absolutely are. Can provide all of our housing. You set up kind of where your group sleeps, so it's not like we have gendered rooms. Um, all of the organizations we work with are open and affirming, and so just so you know that. Awesome. Well, then this is the light. And I definitely think we can all agree that this continued to be a sacred meeting where we celebrate so much good God things, which, wow, don't we need that in this world right now? Lots of good God things um, and the amazing work that all of you all continue to do. So let us remember that the light that is in one digital place can go to a lot of different digital places. Um, because I know that the spirit surrounds all of you, um, and I am thankful every day to be on this journey with you. On that note, I'm going to stop the recording.